the mic working? I'm going to give you a sound check. Yeah, let me know if you can hear me, please. No, that's not going to work. Happy Friday, everyone. Everyone's ready for the weekend. Where's my freelance? Go to another live stream. Um, Gordon will be joining us shortly. But until he does, <clears throat> I'm just gonna fly solo for a bit. Get some line work in on this knoll. Canal in the background, canal, canal, canal. Um, just to block in the shapes. He's going to be very faded, so um, it's just more about hinting that he's there, not so much about making him obvious, because the focus is the two main characters. But I do need to get some shapes in otherwise once i do the color washes i won't be able to see what's going on I think I sh theoretically should have um, uh, blocked in all these background tentacles uh, whoops, earlier, but uh, we'll figure it out. Is that ant null or null maybe in the background? The geriatrics need some representation in the symbol adverse. Uh, it is just null, null may, just null. <laughs> um, no geriatric love this on this piece. But um, 
you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take note of the request and make sure that the geriatric community is well represented in some of my next pieces. I hope. How you doing, Kevin? Uh, I'm not very prepared. Where's all my brushes? There we go. Which one's softer? This one's softer. I'm just giving the surface a little glaze of water to wet the paper I'll just help the uh, the paint blend better so what I said I was gonna do is is venom's blue carnage is red and do the background backwards so it's gonna be um, a blue glaze starting on the left going into a red what's up Tommy uh, Gordon will be joining us shortly Yeah, so it's going to be blue on the left, red on the right, and that's just for the background wash. And um, as I start building the detail on top of it, the temperature is going to pop through. Chris Marcellus, thanks for popping in. Hello, Messiah Williams, what's going on? Thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah, Gordon's just on TikTok right now, and he will be popping on any minute or in the next couple of minutes. <clears throat> then we can really get this party started. Thanks, Christos. Uh, what do I say? Blue on the left, red on the right. Actually, really curious to see what Gordon's going to be working on because we didn't really um, check in 
or I didn't really check in with him to see what he's going to be working on. So looking forward to seeing some some of that Gordon Wills. Uh, Gordon Wills special. Thanks, Ayato. Oh, and I think Gordon's here. Let me um, turn off the background music because we're going to get an echo. And uh, I will drop him in. There. Hello. What's going on, buddy? Oh, not much. Uh, that was a quick just... minute. Yeah, no, I, I try not to stay on there too long. Um, had a couple people pop in, so I shared the link and let them know. So hopefully, some people will show up. But yeah, you know, uh, I, just, I just couldn't wait to jump on here and start drawing. You know, I was really oh. excited. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, Hayato Karishi's here. Says, "Hey, Gordon, it's me, Tails." What's up, Tails? Uh, also got his Kyle Williams, one of your friends. The TikTok fam. The TikTok fam's in the house. Tommy Henderson's in the house. And hey, Gordon. What's up, Tommy? Um, yeah. So, what are you? Uh, what are you all you know, about today? I don't know. I was going to ask you. I don't know what to draw today because I've got some commissions that I've been working on, but I, I didn't ask if I, you know, if they wanted me to be working on them on video or anything. So I don't really. Oh, don't want to step on any toes with that, but uh, pick a uh, I don't know, gotta find a, a character and just do like a sketch card or something, something fun. I've been uh, let's see, I got a handful of commissions for this month, uh, from that post I did a while back, and so I was working on Phoenix, Black Widow, Ghost Spider, a couple Iceman, and then Spiral. Oh, wow. it's quite the roster. Oh, yeah, I know. It was all over the place. I, I enjoy it. Now I just got to finish it. <laughs> you ever get a commission for a character? You're like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that actually, like, one of the ones I got, I was kind of like uh, thinking, I don't know. I don't know how this is going to work. I've never drawn this character. It seems kind of hard. I don't know how this is going to work out. And uh, it actually ended up being one of the more fun ones. No. Oh. <laughs> Can All you right. say which one it was or you'd rather not? I mean, yeah, I don't mind. I'll say it was a uh, it was spiral. I thought that was going to be a pain in the butt because of all of her extra limbs and everything. But it was actually really fun. All right. See, I remember um, a while back, somebody had me do, this is going a while back, Goro from Mortal Kombat. Yeah. And I I started on it, and then I was like, no, I'm not doing this, sorry. Uh, I couldn't figure out the, the anatomy. Yeah. Like so the double was, shoulder blades, uh, like, this isn't right. going to work. So <laughs> that's what I was worried about, too, because, like, how do, you, how do you fit them on there? And I kind of looked at some... Uh, some just pictures of her online and everything and saw that what a lot of people did doesn't really anatomically seem to make sense, but they just kind of like line them next to each other. So like there's one and then the rest of them are just behind the first one. So you can really only see them when the arms are moving around in okay. some of the pictures I looked at. So, I mean, it, it doesn't look like that that would actually be how it would be if, you know, in real life somebody had six arms, but it works for drawing. It made it easier <laughs> for drawing for sure. <laughs> Just bake it. Yeah. You know, small canvas. You can you can disguise things. Yeah, just put some armor on it and then it's just like arms coming out of weird places. No one's gonna notice. <laughs> That's right. 
All right, so I'm still trying to figure this out, but while I'm trying to figure out who I'm going to draw, I'm going to keep sketching. So I see that you're still working on uh, Croissant and uh, Nova. Um, JB named them. Yeah, it was Croissant and um, Venom. Oh, Venom, oh yeah, Venom yeah, yeah, yeah. or something like that. Oh, yeah, I saw yeah. those comments. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, that's, that's what it is. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't work on anything since last night, so <laughs> um, I gotta get this done, but no, I think I need to let this dry for a bit because it's soaking wet. Um, yeah, because I'm just picking away paint now, so I guess I'll set this aside for now and go back to um, uh, where is my because you know. Why not? So like I haven't done Venom in a while. Yeah. Well, that's what I was telling everybody before I jumped on here. I was like, hey, you might get to see a, might get to see a sweet Venom. So you don't want to disappoint the crowd. No, no. Okay, so hang on. Let's let's go to Venom. <laughs> we are Venom or Vimon, as some uh, people refer to him. <laughs> Vimon. Um, oh, Christopher Marcellus is in the house. What's going on? Is what's up, Gordon? What's up? Um, I, I'm still trying to figure out who I'm going to draw. This is I should have been better prepared for this. Do I need to pull out the deck of magic cards? Maybe so. Hoping it's a popular character. <laughs> <laughs> Toad. <laughs> Um, all right, all right, all right. Okay, here's the deck. Say when to stop. Stop. When your character is Mrs. Sinister or Mojo. I think you've had that before. Yeah, I did have that one before, and I drew oh, yeah. both of them already. <laughs> yes, you did. So let's go to the next one. Ghost Rider. Oh, nice. Okay. There you go. I, Boom. I can work with that. You can bang out a ghost rider in 14 minutes. Yeah. 14 minutes? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Johnny. With who? With Johnny Blaze. Oh, Johnny Blaze. Yeah. That's usually the one I stick to. So Actually, which one? Is that the ponytail one? I don't think so. Ponytail. Or is that the classic Ghost Rider with the leather motorcycle jacket with the spike. I think, yeah, that's the yeah. classic. I think it's the ponytail one. Um, Blaze. I think his name's just Blaze. It doesn't, he's not really a Ghost ghost Rider. He just has the fire gun and he rides a motorcycle. Uh, oh. What's the deal with this uh, Ghost Rider 2099? Is that a... They brought him back. I, you know what? I'm so detached from the, um, the actual world of comics. Yeah, me too. That I, I don't know. I was just doing some googling and saw that one. He's got like a like a chainsaw that's on fire. Oh, that's cool. I mean, I like the look of Cosmic Ghost Rider. Oh yeah. Yeah, the with the fishbowl. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Um, right, who else we got? Uh, What's Tina's the, uh, in the house. Yeah, it is Venom, Vimon. <laughs> so um, what's what's uh, the identity of the Cosmic Ghost Rider? Wasn't it like it was somebody else? It was like an existing character, wasn't it? <laughs> Seriously asking me? <laughs> yeah, because you've drawn it. you've drawn him before. That's why I was asking. You. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not intimate with their backstories. <laughs> I think it was uh, what it, I thought it was it. like. Thought it was like Frank Castle or somebody. Oh, is it really? The Cosmic Ghost Rider. Um, Kendra Haggins in the house. Uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider is a fictional superhero appearing in American comic books. Blah blah blah. Where's his story? Uh, backstory. Where. Cosmic Ghost Rider was Frank Castle, who was killed in a battle alongside the other heroes of Earth against Thanos, and was given a second chance to live again as the Ghost Rider by Mephisto. 
I did not know that. I thought I remembered reading that on some article. Like, that's the thing. I don't read a lot of the newer comics really either, but every now and then, like, an article will get suggested in my feed, and it'll be something that looks interesting, and I'll check it out. And that was, like, a couple years ago, I think, mm -hmm. when the Cosmic Ghost Rider showed up. Yeah, he first appeared in Thanos Volume 2, Number 13, which is, I don't know, is there a date here? Let's see, first appearance. First appearance, doesn't say the year. Thanos wins, Volume 1, 2018? Oh, that makes sense. No, 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 hang on, that's when the wiki was last updated. Um, oh no, J January 2018. But in store date November 22nd, 2017. So I don't know, a few years. Oh yeah, I guess it is 2021. It's been a while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I I just thought that he he's been around for longer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but there's also like a green ghost rider. Like really? A green flame. Um. It's kind of like demonic, no? So are they doing like the uh, like the the Green Lantern core, like the different lanterns, except they're like the different Ghost Rider skulls. <laughs> one is evil, one is good, one is kind of in between. I oh, the green one is also known as Vengeance. Ah, uh, right. So I, fi I finally finished uh, watching Invincible today. Uh, what'd you think? Oh my gosh! I mean, it was awesome, but it was oof. It was kind of brutal. That was violent. <laughs> that was kept, so violent. I kept finding myself anytime like a skull would get crushed or somebody would get cut in half. I'm thinking, is this like? Did they actually draw this correctly? Is that what it would look like? <laughs> Freeze frame and do a little anatomy <laughs> study there. That is not where the molars will go. <laughs> Write a letter to Amazon. Saying, Those don't look like the eye sockets. Come on. <laughs> the cheekbone should definitely be higher. <laughs> um, All right. I'm going to start. Uh, I got to figure out what I'm going to do here. Sandra says Ghost Rider is cool. Yeah, Ghost Rider is a great character. Um, so there's a lot of comments. I'm gonna make keeping up with them. Yeah, so Ghost Rider, if I remember, like back in the '90s, he was one of the more popular Marvel characters, like with Spider-Man and Wolverine. He was like right up there. Yeah, um, that was like my comic heyday, I guess. And they, got... they try to leverage him into the Marvel Knights thing, right? Yeah. Um, but Which that, I think they're going to do again. Yeah, Disney's doing that, isn't it? Like a, mm -hmm. like a show or something. They're doing something, and they mentioned Ghost Rider, Moon Knight, maybe Punisher, and Blade, maybe? Yeah, Daredevil wasn't that, too. So. Yeah, they, I actually, I was looking that up the other day, and they had a, quite a few characters that kind of went through the Marvel Knights. Um... I think, I think Strange. Doctor Strange. Yeah, yeah. He, he would have tied in somewhere. Uh, yeah. That should be interesting. I don't know if that's going to be part of their animated stuff, though. Because Moon Knight's getting his show, right? Right. Yep. Uh, with What's his face from um, the new Star Wars movies? Uh, um, yeah. Cole? He was in Spider Verse, too. He was in the, uh, the end credits, at least. <laughs> What is his name? He was uh, he was also Apocalypse in that X Men movie. Yeah, um, o Oscar Isaac, I think. That's it, or Isaac Oscar. Uh, yeah, one of the two. <laughs> that's what happens when you have two first names, right? Yeah. <laughs> Billy Bob Thornton. Well, I guess not so much. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Mm -hmm. yeah, so you got your did you get your Ghost Rider figured out? Yeah, I think so. 
I think so. Don't forget the Hello Kitty pin on his jacket. Uh, does he really have a Hello Kitty on in the back of his jacket? It's like his like his NASCAR sponsors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to figure this, out what I'm doing. This spirit of vengeance is brought to you by Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> gotta catch them all <laughs> <laughs> then burn them um, oh, I'm getting crazy uh, so do you guys have a long weekend down in uh, you're not gonna not, no? not, not this weekend uh, next weekend oh okay so like a week from Monday is a holiday oh, okay we get it this week Victoria Day, but more commonly known as May 2 4 weekend. <laughs> Which most people May. think it's because it comes around the May the 24th of May. But it's actually more a reference to it's the official launch of summer barbecue season. So you go oh. grab your 2 4 beer, which is a 24 pack of beer. So ah, May 2 4. Okay. Because it's not May 24, it's May 2-4. Oh, man. So um, for Christmas this year, my wife got me this. uh, It's like this little uh, cup. It's like a, uh, it's not a koozie kind of thing, but it's like a cup that keeps it cold. But it's like you put cans in it. You can also pour stuff in it, but it's to keep your can cold as well. And it came with this uh, four pack of the month club from this uh, local brewery. And I've been having a lot of trouble <laughs> making sure that I pick them up by the end of the month every month. Oh. <laughs> but you just reminded me. So that I still have to get mine for May. I have to go there either this weekend or next weekend. Oh, okay. You got to just swing by and pick up here. Right. Yeah. They do like what I, it's, it's a, uh, a craft brewery. Like it's one of the bigger ones in new Orleans and so they do like new releases all the time, but you got to go there. They make you go and you just kind of can choose from whatever they have there. It's pretty fun. And also I can't keep up with drinking them fast enough either. Cause I don't, I can't drink them that often. Um, I'm just catching up the comments. Um, colors look nice. Sorry. Uh, I think there's a lot of them. W, W. I don't know what W means. Me either. There's a lot of Ws in the comments. Uh, colors look mm-hmm. nice. Shagger says 2099. Okay, so we're going back to Spider-Man 2099. Um, yeah, Oscar Isaac, that's again. who he was voicing in Spider-Verse. Um, now talk about the age. I think a large group of our audience right now is in more than 13 to 14 year old. <laughs> um, so maybe we don't talk about beer as much. Yeah, <laughs> maybe so. As hey, I take as long another as we... sip from my beer, because <laughs> we know, just need to yes. work. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I did promise in the description that we're going to talk about croissants and other fine baked goods. <laughs> croissants uh, are all good. Yeah. Oh, Ken's in the house. What's going on, buddy? Uh, says he's thirsty. Got to quench that thirst, buddy. Um, yeah, I think we covered the coastal conversation. <laughs> <laughs> That's that. Um, no, I was thinking about it last night because apparently we're not done with the coastal conversation. Um <laughs> And I create a logo for myself and, you know, going back to the idea of printing some of my own uh, stock. I was like, you know, I should really just put a croissant in the logo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people that don't get it, they'll just be like, oh, look, it's a croissant. That's interesting. Right? Maybe it's a bakery. Uh, and then those that, that get it will just get it. Yeah, I agree. Sounds like a, I think it sounds like a great idea. Some better venomized croissant. Um, <laughs> uh, That's probably an even better idea, I think. Yeah, it'll just look like a croissant. It's chocolate 
like dip in chocolate or you know chocolate drizzle croissant. <laughs> no one's gonna understand. I don't know. What, why is there a croissant on this? I don't know. Make stamps. Use it as my signature. Um, <laughs> Isaiah Williams is asking who's the best superhero. Um, if I'm picking my favorite, it's Spider-Man. Yeah, that's what Chandra said as well. Do you know what though? That makes it, that makes me pretty boring, I guess, because why? The question is Spider- why do you think? Oh, why? Um, yeah. Well, I, he was the first superhero that I really uh, was into, and. I mean, I think the uh, I think the Spider Verse movie did a great job, kind of showing why he's so relatable to everybody because he's Spider Man, but really he he was a kid, and he anybody could imagine themselves being him, right? And well, I think that it was like a window into you know that world. But you know, I think that partially has to do with the uh, what differentiated Marvel from DC at that time. Um, because DC was, you know, either like Superman or people that were born with power, were kind of born into greatness, or people who chose to go into it, like um, Batman. I mean, not greatness, but with Marvel, it seemed like it was... Um, involuntary right like spider-man he didn't choose to be spider-man he didn't choose to get the powers he just kind of got thrusted upon him fantastic four right yeah um they're kind of normal people that under some for the most part weird circumstances got these powers and and it's the same thing with the villains where they you know something happened and they became super and they don't decide what to do with uh, with their new abilities. Right. A lot of times, you know, so the, the difference is just, it's not the powers. That's the difference between them, the villains and the heroes, really. It's, if you're good and you get powers, you're going to be good. Yeah. I guess. I don't know. But like, then you have the whole Magneto, and Professor X thing. It's like they both really want the same goal, but it's just they have different opinions of... Well, I think that's what really separates the X-Men from uh, and what made them so popular. Um, But what separates them from the rest of the superhero teams is that when the X-Men really got popular and kind of got reinvented, they were... um, There was a lot of subtones of... um, racism and um, prejudice right. in it, right? So mm-hmm. these were people that were born different and just want to belong. Um, maybe born different is not the right phrase, but they're not your typical cookie cutter individual. So I think a lot of people were able to relate to that, right? Because especially when you're and at that preteen, early teens, everyone feels out of place. Right. That's, you know, part of growing up. Yeah. Because yeah. oh, we're all shoot. unique and special in our own way. That's right. That, re- <laughs> that may that have come off. Straight out of an episode of Barney. Yeah. I'm special. And so are you. <laughs> la, 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 la. Um, <laughs> It's true. <laughs> We're all special. Um, yeah, Heido <laughs> says Spider-Man was always my favorite as well. Uh, remembers playing with the little cousin who was dressed up as Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> but um, okay, you know, Spider-Man is it's a very deep character. I don't know if intentionally they, uh, they did that. But even from the villains, most Spider-Man villains aren't just bad people trying to do bad things. Yeah, it's kind of like Batman. They, 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 it's very similar in that way, that a lot of their villains are kind of like 
due to tragic circumstances. Yeah, like Doc Ock. Um, I don't remember Electro's original backstory. Um, but you know, actually, maybe in the 60s, they were robbing banks. And yeah, I mean, I think back then it was a little more cookie cutter, though. It was right. more, you know, more of the camp and all that, and not necessarily as deep as they became over time. Um, but even yeah, though, even, in sorry, like the, I was going to say in uh, Spider-Man 3, uh, the Sandman, like he was a bad guy, but you kind of, you felt bad for him because of his circumstance with his daughter and all that stuff. So, I mean, I don't know how closely that mirrors the comics version of Sandman, but it was like one of those things, like he's bad, he's doing bad things, but he... Is He's just trying to help his for daughter. The right yeah. right. Uh, where you could probably, yeah, you know, depending on how the story's written, you could make him an anti hero and you could make him like a He was like a I think he was the best character in that movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, can, uh, Hayato's asking if I know Candace. Uh, I do, <laughs> don't think so. Who's Candace? I don't know. Oh, uh, don't ask for him. Oh, okay. Oh. I just told me don't answer. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see where this goes. <laughs> Sorry about it. <laughs> Candace. I don't know. I think I don't know too many Candaces. Maybe like Candace Cameron from Full House. I don't <laughs> think that this is the audience that would be making a Full House uh, reference. <laughs> right. uh, waiting to find. I'm very excited to find out who Candace is now. Oh man! Well, well, that gets sorted out. I was hoping that by now I'd have proper internet at home so I could do one of these streams from home and be able to do the drink and drop, but not quite there yet. Yeah, well, when when you when that happens, you should be able to stream a little later too, right? Yeah, because I'm I'm always down for doing like a, a little bit later. I mean, I don't know how late you want to stay up streaming, but. Now, if if I'm from home, I don't care, right? I'll go till 11 o'clock, right? Yeah. The longest Facebook will let me go on is eight hours. So um, I figure if we do a drink and draw, we kick that off around nine. By, um, I figure by 11.30, we'll just all be passed out. That's, that's right, interesting guess. that Facebook has an eight-hour limit. Does YouTube have a limit? Do you know? Uh, um, I think YouTube's limit is 12. Oh, okay. Twitch, and I know Instagram's is like an hour. Yeah. Um, Twitch has a limit too, but it's, it's longer than that because it's built specifically for long streams. Yeah. So, so, okay, so Hyro said it's basically like an old joke. Okay. What Candace is a meme? About Candace. I'm gonna Google this. Do you know Candace? Do you know Candace? Oh, I forgot. Uh probably not up to date on our memes. <laughs> Do you know the one about the boys? Uh, hang on a second. I'm reading the urban dictionary definition of this. We'll make sure I can read it on live. Yeah, make sure you read through that first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not reading this on air. Um, <laughs> it, it's like these nuts. Oh, okay. So it's can this something something fit in your mouth? Gotcha. Right. <laughs> okay. 
Good, good, good. You're right. Good to know. Good to know. I'll add that to my repertoire. <laughs> Save that for the next uh, the sketch card challenge. Uh, <laughs> hey, Hara, do you know Candace? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Hayato. I did it to myself. Um, <laughs> is that going to do this? He's got his June tune thing coming up soon. Yeah. Um, you going to take part in that? I'm going to try. I, last year, I think I did all 30 days, but this year, I don't know how I'm going to be able to do all 30 days. So I'm just going to kind of go here and there and help spread the word. Yeah. Yeah, I'll share and everything, but I doubt I'll be able to actually. I definitely won't be able to partake in a 30 day challenge. Yeah. Um, Last year, I, I tried to make it as easy as possible. So I picked a theme and then just decided I was going to work exclusively at like five by seven size. And I was able to do it, but I had to catch up at one point. And my catch up was like I took one big sheet of paper and drew like six different characters on it. And I was like, okay, I'm done. I don't, but it's really um, cool. It's it's been cool to see that thing grow because uh, it seems to get a little bit bigger each year. Yeah. I mean, it's got the, is it Winston Newton? Uh, maybe Faber Castell. Oh, yeah. Faber Castell. Yeah, yeah. That's the one. Um, yeah, getting you no know, brand tied to it. That's great. It's trying to take on uh, Inktober. I in Mermaid. I watch something else. Yeah, Beethoven, right? like that's just crazy. That is pretty nuts. I gotta say, I never really managed to do any of these challenges. I I've done June tune the last couple of years. Like this past year, I did all thirty, but the year years before is kind of was hit or miss. Like how many I could get done, and then. One year I did Inktober, but it was a Batman themed, so that was that was easy. Oh, you just you gave yourself a Batman prompt, or that was part of the? It wasn't part of the official one. ink. ink it wasn't a part of the official Inktober, but somebody posted it online, and I just oh, was okay. like, "All right, I'm doing this." <laughs> so, so like, what do you win? Does Haro come to your house and cook you dinner or something? Or <laughs> how does that work? What are you trying to say? Are you trying to say what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> no. just trying to get better it's a sense of accomplishment <laughs> yeah. okay, you, you're the one that asks what's the point I get the point it's about trying to get better <laughs> yeah oh man yeah but it's pretty fun and it's cool to kind of see all the different stuff I like to follow when it's going on I like to follow the hashtag so I can see like what everybody else is drawing and like the characters, because it's, it's funny. You tend to see like people, depending on how old you are, you tend to draw cartoons from your childhood. So it's kind of cool to see like the different generations, the different cartoons that people decide to draw stuff like that. Right. But I, I try and stay away from like, Marvel characters because like, yeah, they had all those cartoons and I did watch them all, but it's like, I draw that all the time. So I try and make it different. So what, like, like water ship down and heavy metal? <laughs> Do I? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just, I just, you know, try and draw something different that I normally don't draw. So, you know, people can just, you know, see something different. <laughs> yeah, it, you know what that's it if i do somehow take part in, in june tune i'm doing heavy metal there you go <laughs> and i got a stern talking to from Harl. <laughs> i think uh yeah, the first year I did it, I just drew a bunch of random stuff, like whatever kind of, like a lot of time, a lot of them too, I was drawing stuff that like my kids were watching. So I was drawing like Garfield and um, 
like PJ masks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Garfield's still a thing. Kids these days watch Garfield. Yeah, so they had uh, a more recent uh, series that was like a you know like three D animated, and it was on Netflix. They had all the episodes on Netflix, so my daughter found it on Netflix and she watched the crap out of it. And then that kind of got her into some of the older ones. Is he still as obnoxious as he used to be? Like, does he push the dog off the chair and the old brood? He's not. He's not as obnoxious, I guess, is maybe the best way to answer that. He still is, but like, it's it's a different show than the older one. Right, because the older one, it's more wasn't really so good. No, it was the older one. Yeah, it was just kind of more. Uh, it wasn't it like eleven minute episodes, and then they had besides the specials. The specials, I guess, were different. But like the cartoon is like they had like eleven minutes of Garfield, and then it was Garfield and friends. So they went to the farm and had all the different animals. Right, but it wasn't geared towards little kids, right? Huh. Well, I guess you're right. It wasn't t- geared towards little kids. It was probably more towards maybe like preteens. Yeah, think. because the co- the comic strips were definitely not for kids. I mean, it's that like humor Bilberg. goes over their head. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's like Billberg, right? Like um, some really smart stuff with some political undertones. Um, Lots of lasagna. Lasagna, yeah. That, that's the reason that my daughter ever tried lasagna for the first time was because of Garfield. And like she didn't know what she was missing until she got into Garfield. <laughs> well, I'm... It's, that's a real thing, though, because when I was a kid and I used to watch Ninja Turtles and Splinter would eat sushi and they would all be grossed out by it, like that kept me away from sushi for years. <laughs> Yeah, I tried spinach because of Popeye. <laughs> right? It's crazy. No, Popeye lied. <laughs> I don't feel much stronger. <laughs> it kind of tastes like the feet. <laughs> yeah. My forearms don't look like my calves. This is not <laughs> working. <laughs> yeah. Mom, you did it wrong. <laughs> you eat a raw at a calf. This must not be the same spinach. Yeah. <laughs> You buy the no-name brand stuff. Um, Shit. Oops, excuse me. Oh man, this marker's what getting me trouble. Oh. Having some ink drip out. It did this the other day too. I don't know what the deal is. I may need to replace the tip because it's the second time it's done that, and I use oh, this marker all the tripping? time. Yeah, like it. If if I use it for long enough, it'll start to come out. And like, I, there's a little, I don't know if you can see it, but there's like a yeah. little spot right yeah. there. And now I'm going to have to do some magic to make it disappear somehow. It's a, it's an error card now. <laughs> there you go, Tommy. Yeah, that happened to me the other day. I was doing, um, uh, I was doing a piece and I'm just coloring, coloring, coloring. And all of a sudden, markers that. <laughs> Done. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, these cheap marks. Well, this well. changes things. <laughs> yeah. I was just. Yeah. So it's not as. Didn't end up being as smooth as I wanted to be. You know, it's funny, though. Stuff like that happens all the time, and you know, you just kind of have to adjust. And that's like sometimes I get questions on streams. Sometimes they'll ask me, like, what do you do when, when you make a mistake or you screw something up or like, you know, do you get upset? Or I'm like, I mean, yeah, maybe for a little while, but the thing is you just kind of have to work around it and figure it out because you can, you can work around stuff. It's not really a mistake. It just becomes part of, you know, whatever the piece is and you just kind of work process. around it. Yeah. yeah. And it was um, funny because Scotty Young's talked about inking before and he's kind of mentioned that like, people have asked him like about uh, having like jitters or stuff in his lines and stuff like that. And that's kind of what he said. He's like, it's just, you know, it's part of the style of how he inks and it's just kind of is a unique part of his art. So it doesn't bother him. 
Right. Um, it, it's funny because uh, Sean and Rodney were talking about this on their stream yesterday. Well, not this specifically, but they're talking about the creative process really being an exercise in uh, problem solving. Yeah. Right. That's that's what makes one piece look better than the other. And that's what makes certain people better than others. It's not about the ability to to draw a straight line or a curved line or understanding color. It's about looking at the canvas or the paper or the concept and how they tackle that and how the composition of it and all the problem solving that comes or that's involved in putting it together. Some of the technical things, like say, like when you're dripping ink, then the other one is just like, you know, how are you going to make it look the way you want it to look? Yeah. <laughs> It's true because I mean you're gonna you're gonna come you're gonna have to face that like at some point on almost every single piece you do there's gonna be something that doesn't come out the way you planned or whatever and you're just gonna have to figure out how you're gonna move forward from there. Yeah, but even from the beginning, right? I mean, the, some of the yeah. first problems you need to tackle is like like you said, what am I gonna draw, and how am I gonna right? Um, you know how I'm gonna structure this card or drawing or whatever it is right uh, mm -hmm. and that's something that i feel that i'm going to talk like an old man because you know back in my day <laughs> we made our own paints and we couldn't buy a paint <laughs> so you had to cut your hair and tape it to a twig with homemade tape um that um, i think a lot of younger <laughs> younger people um are more interested in how you're doing something versus why mm -hmm. right and I've, I've talked about this before it's like oh what pencil is that or what kind of paper oh, yeah. is that where it's, it's about the tool but not so much about the why and i think the why part is the the thought process that goes behind it that you know right. ultimately doesn't matter what product you're using or what pencil you're using or paper if you can visualize it and figure out how to achieve what you want to achieve in your head then you'll just make do whatever things you have right mm -hmm. that's like yeah when we were talking a, a while back when we were talking about that uh like that five dollar challenge or dollar store challenge or whatever we're talking about where you spend like a certain amount of money and you buy your supplies and see what comes out it's like I, I get those questions a lot on my streams, like, you know, what pencils, what markers do you use, all that stuff. But really, that's not as important. Yeah. And, and I did. And I asked you the other day when you were uh, working on the Venom, I asked you what kind of paper you were using. And the reason I asked you that is because I saw that you were doing like the, the, the ink wash or whatever you were doing there. And I was asking that because I wanted to know, you know, what paper you were using because how it takes that. Cause I've actually been wanting to start doing that. I bought, I bought uh, some blue and some black ink probably like six months ago. Cause I wanted to start trying doing some ink wash stuff mm -hmm. and I haven't even touched it yet, but yeah, that's I, know. What I was and, curious about. Yeah, I know. And I, I understand why you're asking it and I make fun of you and then go into the, and this is the kind of pencil I use and I'm wearing blue socks, <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you get into certain things where, like what kind of paper you're using for that technique? That is, that's a valid, valid question because you can't do a very wet, well, actually, sorry, you can, but it's going to be a pain in the ass to work on copy paper, right? With an right. ink wash, because chances are you're going to, you know, punch well, a it's hole like, in it. Yeah. It's like right. using markers on copy paper. You can do it, but it's going to bleed right through and you're not going to be able to layer anything. Yeah, it's the same thing. Um, but doesn't mean that you have to go buy Arches premium cold pressed paper that's like seventeen dollars a sheet. You just need a thick stock with some tooth on it, right? Whether it's yeah, you know, yeah. I was just, I was just point, yeah. I was just pointing that out to say that like I was asking you that because I had a reason behind it. It wasn't just like asking it because you're using it. I was asking because I knew what you were doing on it. That's yeah. why I was asking the question. <laughs> You don't need to explain yourself to me. It's fine. <laughs> I don't care. I'm just making sure the viewers at home know. Yeah. 
and, and like I said, said before, most of the paints I use are dollar store paints. Yeah. Right? Um, just because I like them. And that that's the thing too, though. But you prove the point that it doesn't matter about what supplies you're using because you would think if they're dollar store paints, then you know most people would think, oh, well, that's crap. But just looking at your art, you can tell that it doesn't really matter if like that's not you know the top of the line paint or whatever you know oh. such and such artist is using. You can do it's they're just tools. Mm -hmm. Definitely not the top of the line paint. <laughs> So, like, um, the base, even the Liquitex Basic, which is Liquitex base product, this is, like, $6 Canadian for a color tube. They come in smaller tubes, but they only packs. So, for the price of that, I can buy this. <laughs> 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 and, it, and it's not a matter of... Uh, of the price, really, it's just the product itself. Because I do use the Liquitex and I use the basics and the heavy body and the soft body, like this is the, the stuff that's like this is I think thirteen dollars for what is that two ounces versus dollar fifty for four ounces, but it just depends on what I'm doing. Right. But I like, but I like these because these are Decor and Decor puts out some premium stuff as well. Um, this is just their entry level crafters paint. And I like it because it's fluid and it's got consistent pigment. Yeah, and I'm saying it's not to say that like, you know, Copic markers aren't great. And I do have a lot of Copic markers and I really like them, but I like to use other markers too. My, my big thing about markers is that if they work together, like if they blend well with Copics or with other brands that I use, that's what I like. So it doesn't matter how expensive it is as long as it works well with, you know, everything else that I have. Yeah. And, that makes and so that's kind of like one of the tests. Like if I'm trying out a new brand or something, I'll get a couple and try it out with that and see how it works. I guess I got a weird email. Have you uh, done any commissions on your MCCW stock yet? Uh, no. The only thing that I did on MCCW is that it's, um, it's, I was trying to see how much I can abuse the paper. It's this guy. Oh, nice. I didn't know you were working on that on there. Yeah. I hadn't yeah, seen so that in a while I, since you posted that I, on Instagram. Because I haven't touched it since. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you haven't seen it uh, it's not a commission right well it is not but, um, um, yeah I just tried it because I want like I said I just want to see how far I can push it and how uh, how much abuse they'll take and it's great stock so far I mean I'll see once I take the tape off if it's separated um, but I gotta finish the cards first yeah uh, yeah, I need to do that. I need to just take it for a test drive. Uh, okay, so Hayato says, can't wait till I'm old so I can say that. Okay, so I guess that's in response to my thing from 10 minutes ago. Um, oh, about you making your own paint? <laughs> yeah, back in my day, <laughs> you kids don't know. Uh, as I said, they like the dollar store markers because of how vibrant they are. Yeah. Now... My daughter did get, she got some markers from Five Below not too long ago, and they actually weren't bad. I or didn't try and below. mix them with any of my, it's it's like a dollar store kind of thing, but it's oh, okay. $5 is like the thing instead of a right. dollar. But yeah, I, uh, I haven't tried them with my stuff, which I probably should do, but I have just kind of like colored with them and they weren't bad. Yeah, I think ultimately what, one of the big differences between Copix and some of the other stuff is actually how much use you get out of um, 
a marker. Because I bought, you know, I don't use markers, right? So I bought this set of right. new markers, which is like an Amazon house brand or off brand, um, to kind of fuss around them to get a sense for markers. And and they're good. I mean, the color labels are all over the place. You look at the cap, it looks like light green, and you go and it's like hunter's green. Um, but they dry <laughs> out quick. Considering that I barely use them, I've already killed the grays and one of the yellows, and I barely use them. Yeah. So I think that's one of the elements there. It's, it's the value they get out of it. The and the whole thing will last longer. Yeah, they. I I don't have. There's only been a few that I have that I've had to actually replace nibs on so far. Um, yeah. um, but the, you know, the great thing is that you can refill them and it, it makes them in the long run, as long as you take care of them, it, you know, it makes it totally worth it financially because you get your use out of them and to refill them. It's much cheaper than buying a new marker. So it makes mm -hmm. them a lot more affordable if you're, you know, using them long term. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, th so. I, th I think some of the other brands are starting to do that too, because Copic was kind of like one of the first ones out in the market, and so now there's all these other ones that are kind of buying to yeah, be the cheaper alternative. And they're fighting to, um, to kind of navigate the waters with the Copic um, patents. Hmm. Uh, I mean, everybody's ink is proprietary and the kind of color formulas, but you know, everybody can make a deep red. Somebody might be a little warmer, cooler, or whatever. But um, right, yeah, they have some patents in in the nibs and the refill bottles and stuff like that. But like when I went to school back in the dark ages, when we had to walk to school in the snow <laughs> barefoot. Um, <laughs> The Copic what didn't exist. It was Prismacolors. That was it. And yep. um, the other one that they had was it Windsor Newton, the thick ones. Somebody else had these alcohol markers, and there was no brush nibs. It was just chisel and yep, uh, the fine point, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first ones I ever got were Prismacolors. It's Prisma, and that was before Copics. Or bear, uh, I still I, I still have a lot of prism color ones. ones too. Yeah, I went. <laughs> my dad was cleaning the basement and he took out a bunch of stuff from mine that was just sitting in boxes, like trading cards and sketchbooks. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight boxes of prisma colors. And this is when prisma color was barrel. There's a company that owned them before. Yeah. And they're just six colors. So, so you have a box of whatever color this is. Uh, terracotta. <laughs> oh, wow. Those are like old school. These are the old, and they all work. I checked. I threw out a couple of them were dried out, but these, I just kept all the ones that work because maybe one day I'll use them. They can see how. Man, those okay. So <laughs> this is, this is gonna be a little off topic, but I'll bring it back. Yeah, I was gonna say I uh, I watch a lot of uh, the Pluto TV app when I'm like just hanging out on the couch and don't really have any interest in watching anything in particular. I'll put it on Pluto TV and just kind of go through all the stuff to have. And I don't know if you know what Pluto TV is, but it's it's an no app. Idea. Okay, so it's an app, and it, I think it's a Viacom app. So, like, it's it's populated with basically all of their old, like, their library of content, and it's it's free, and it's just ad-based. So there's all kind of ads on it when you're watching your shows, but it's all old stuff. Like, it's got uh, American Gladiators from the 90s. There's, like, a 24-7 Ninja Turtles channel and just, like, <laughs> old stuff like that. Like, there's all different categories. They got movies on there, too. But anyway, a couple weeks ago... I found a channel that was the price is right. The Bob Barker years. So it's like the yeah. price is right from this. It was in the seventies. And so I've, I've been watching that for the last couple of weeks. And when you showed those markers, the packaging and everything kind of made me think of that. Oh yeah. Hang on. Let me see the, there's a, 
Uh, yeah, so like here's here's a uh, here's a more modern one for example. Like they don't even look the same. You know, oh no, logos, it's not the same company. This is one like the, yeah. when they're all on them. Um, we have certified non-toxic. Um, yeah, I can't find a copyright on these. Have you have you uh, messed around with the the Posca paint markers at all? Uh, no, I have not. Uh, Mancha was talking about it. Um, he was going to check them out. I I'm not sure what I would do with time them. Time to time. Yeah, I know, because you're painting anyway. I don't know how they'd be helpful to you. I think they'd be more helpful to people that are mark people. Um, the, no, uh, I, I like to right? use them, but... Yeah, that's yeah, that's kind of what I use them for, like highlights. And then another thing that I use them for that makes it easier for me is when you're drawing uh, Miles or uh, Spider Gwen. You know how their webbing is colored, so his is red and hers is like a teal on the pink. Yep. So instead of yeah. trying to like line that out and kind of make everything work, if you just do like the base color and then have a paint pen to go over the top for the, the webbing, it makes it so much easier because you can just draw the webbing on top of it. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. And, well, I, and I found, I was just going to say, I found that it doesn't work really well on smooth surfaces at all. It has to have a little bit to it because when I try and use them on just the regular smooth bristle, it doesn't work. But on the stock that usually upper deck has, it's not, it's got a little bit to it. Well, I've seen um, Bianchi uses those markers a lot. Okay. Um, right. If you, if you watch any of his process videos, I mean, he uses everything he spits on the canvas and, you know, uses his hands to get back. Like he'll, he'll just press like this <laughs> to get texture. If you own an original piece of art from him, you, you could probably clone a little mini Bianchi at home. Um, but yeah, he uses them for like, look, I'm going to do the shadows now and just pull out the black one and block in a black area and then paint over it and so forth. Um, kind of want to try them. Actually, I should probably just at the very least grab a white one because I keep on complaining that I have no way to do really, really fine white details. Yeah. Um, because well, the, yeah, you should check them out because they do have like several different uh, tip yeah. sizes. Yeah, I order. See if you can order individuals or just a basic set. And what's around with them? Uh, can I check out your comments a little bit? Um, Hayato's back. Um, Sean Draft fell asleep. Okay. Um, and Hayato says, does the same except he does it with Hulu. So I guess that's in reference to watching the old stuff. And. Is I uh, asking if you have an Insta? So I don't know if it's me or you, but the answer is if yes. We have both parts. Okay. Um, and Instagram. So your Instagram is. Art. Oh yeah, my ins Art of Gordon Wills. Yes, I'm just the same on every platform. Ah, okay. Yeah, and mine's Dre Studios, same as most platforms. So. Yeah like to follow either or both yep and if anybody is interested in buying this ghost rider let me know oh geez you're going like right for the clothes huh <laughs> <laughs> well i was saying that because i think i'm going to move on to draw something else because you Do know i don't want to let a card <laughs> uh you know Maybe so. I got to um, oh, shoot. You want to make a Check fun message? Uh, yep. Make a fun exercise. First superhero comment. Go. Whoever's yeah. watching, drop a hero. Oh, wait, there's more. In the comments, first person to drop a hero's character Gordon will most likely draw yeah yes 
Yeah, I, most likely. I mean, wait, did somebody say one? No, no, still waiting for, yeah. for character oh, it, choice. Yeah. Depends what it is, but as long Same as it's not too crazy. <laughs> well. All right, I'll just pick another card and stuff. Man, the, the audience is letting us down today. Yeah. Oh, no. I was saying I'm guessing it's Spider-Man. <laughs> Eating a croissant. <laughs> I, I did. Uh, I did. Uh, I'm going to show this since you mentioned that. Something I drew the other day. I've been doing like a series of like red characters on TikTok. And so I did a uh, Raphael eating pizza. Oh yeah. And in the, in the uh, audio, I was like, yeah, Raph is even mad when he's eating pizza. Who gets mad when they eat pizza? <laughs> this guy. All right. Let's see. Nobody said anything. I will do. Oh, Jamie. Ah, here we go. What's up, buddy? Jamie Caffey in the house is Red Hood. Red Hood? Yeah. Okay. That's not Eating Marvel. But Doesn't that's matter. not Marvel. Okay. Just making sure. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. Oops. All right. So I'll ask you this because I think about this now every time I draw a character that has a gun. Like, from working with upper deck for so long, do you like purposely not draw those when you're drawing nope. those characters? When if when if it's if it's a license thing? Yeah. Like I just I, have stopped doing it in general, like unless it's like cable or somebody that has a ridiculously fake gun. Yeah, I mean if I look at the stuff that I draw or paint on a usual basis it doesn't really come up I actually have one do i yeah i have one commission coming up that is going to have a gun in it um but because i've been working on pretty much ap's mostly um yeah no can't do the guns there so even if it's yeah, cable, i, think I don't give them a gun I think Upper Decks just kind of trained me that way because, yeah, when I draw Red Hood, I usually don't draw him with a gun. I usually draw him with a crowbar. Well, you can take the opportunity to give him a gun. Does Red Hood usually have a gun? Yes. Traditionally? He, uh, yeah, he's he usually has guns, um, probably knives and stuff too, but... Uh, I think sometimes he's been drawn with a crowbar. That was kind of like a nod to the Joker. Because Red Hood is one of the Robins that just is very disgruntled, right? Yes, he, he is Jason Todd. That was when they brought back Jason Todd. And so the Joker, you know, like whatever, when that was, I guess it was in the 90s when he was killed off. And the right, Joker, like, the, yeah, because of the ball, he got... Yeah, he got viciously murdered with a crowbar. So when there was a redesign recently, whoever the artist was that redesigned him, like would draw him sometimes with a crowbar, which I thought was kind of cool. Yeah. But I just kind of remember him more from like uh, Hush and uh, Under the Red Hood, that animated movie, which was awesome. Yeah, that one I think I actually think I've seen. It's I it's definitely I've one seen. of the better ones. Well, and it's actually funny. funny. Um, the the DC animated stuff for the most part is actually really good. Yeah, it um, is definitely Killing Joke, not so much. Um, because they just dragged it out and wrote this whole. Uh, yeah, they. They for, they tend to have problems when they try and adapt these really, really popular storylines. Like I heard, I haven't watched the animated Hush, but obviously that's one of the more popular Batman stories. And they, they don't want it to be exactly like the comic. So they put a twist in there and a lot of people weren't happy with the twist. Yeah. 
And I think that's the pressure is adapting those like classic stories and keeping old and new fans happy. Yeah. I don't know. Um, in a second, Jamie says, oh, how are you guys doing? Uh, the stream is breaking up, so I didn't hear that you wanted Marvel. Uh, we didn't want oh, Marvel. I don't Jamie. care. No, I yeah, think Gordon okay. just assumed. Um, but no, it's whatever. Yeah. Um, so so we're good with uh, with Red Hood. Um, I don't remember if I've seen Hush. I Call haven't seen the Owls? movie. No, that's Court of Owls. That one's good. That's also based on the comics, though. But I didn't read those comics, so I can't <laughs> I can't complain about that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought that was awesome. Yeah, Hayato says Flashpoint is one of her favorite DC movies, and that was Ooh. really good. Yes, that, that one's was great. actually that... really good. Yeah, um, they did Justice League really well in the animated world. Yeah. Um, which one was? There was another one that was really good. Um, the one with Super Girl. Uh, Super Girl. The the um, Batman and Superman Apocalypse. Yes, that one was surprisingly good. Yep, and it was interesting early on when they first started doing them. They they would do the movies in different animation styles too. They weren't all the same. But then around yeah. like Flash Flashpoint, they kind of rebooted everything and had it like a had continuity to it so then that was similar but yeah it was really cool but the most recent one which is just the society of america or something like that um oh yeah that... world war one um flash goes back in time and it's like an um it's not really an alternate world he just goes back in time um but That's wonder cool. woman's still there and then there's you know some spoilers but um there's the old flash uh, the one with the helmet. Jake Eric. Yeah. Um, yeah. And a couple of other characters there and they're kind of secret um, operatives for the government. So nobody really remembers them because technically they never happened. It was really good, but the <laughs> style was a little different. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. Check it out if you can. Yeah, I'm a uh, son of a biscuit. I was trying to log into Instagram on my computer because I wanted to look something up, but then I realized I have uh, like the two-factor authentication. Oh. <laughs> so I have to use my phone to get on it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll just Google it. But they did one animated film, which was kind of like a 40s animation style. Um, some Justice League thing. Dow did not, no, did not like that one bit. How long ago was that one? The last few years. And it was kind oh, of like okay. um, the original Superman style character design like from the old mm. animated one. So it was like the, the Fleischer, like the Fleischer Superman? Yeah, 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 yeah. It just did not. Uh -uh. That did not work. I mean, give him credit for trying, but. You know, I wonder if Marvel just got to the point with their animated movies where they just were like threw their hands up and like, we can't put out a solid one. So we just quit because they, they used to put those out too, like 10, 12 years ago. And then mm -hmm. they just stopped. Well, because the MCU. Yeah, that's so, true. Look, because now they're releasing like What If, which is animated. And then uh, I think Marvel Knights, going back to that, I, was, I believe is animated as well. Um, I mean, Modoc is out, but that's actually who they own Hulu as well. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, they just totally reset. Because the Planet Hulk wasn't bad. No. Uh, 
storyline was okay. The animation was a little crude. Looks like they kind of did it on a budget. Um, they did those Hulk versus Thor and Hulk versus Wolverine, which were not very good. Well, it just the, felt like it was done on a budget. The cool thing about Hulk versus Wolverine, though, was they did all that Weapon X stuff, so we could see Deadpool. Yeah. But, yeah, like, story-wise, for sure, too, they weren't on the same level as the DC ones. They just weren't. They just felt rushed. Some of the Avengers ones they did early on were okay. Like, they had, there was two Avengers ones. And this was before there was any Avengers cartoons, too. So, they did the one that had, you know, the classic lineup, really. It had, like, Ant-Man, and but it was, like, the Ultimates. Okay. And they did a sequel that had Black Panther in it. And they went to Wakanda and Claw was in it and all that stuff. And those weren't bad, but that was kind of like the the peak of that stuff. They never really touched on any of... They didn't do like any Spider-Man stuff, which they couldn't, obviously, because of the Sony deal. But like I think that hurt them. Yeah. And they did one with um, Young Avengers. Yeah, that one was okay. Uh, the animation I on guess. that one, I think, if I remember correctly, was actually pretty good, but the story was Yeah, lame. I mean, you, it was like they were trying to give you, like, the baby Avengers, and it just, it wasn't as cool. Like, no. for a project like that, you got to capture some of the hardcore fans, too, and that wasn't going to do it. That was fine for kids, but you're not going to get the hardcore fans with that. No. You should write them a letter. <laughs> Dear I think, my, I think that time has passed. <laughs> they don't care. Here's everything that's wrong money. with your animated license. <laughs> They're going to be like, go away. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know if they're, if Disney had even bought Marvel yet at that point. No, it was before. I remember when that whole Marvel thing happened. It was right when it's the first Avengers, you know, because Paramount had had them. Yeah, and that deal basically finished like a month before the movie was gonna come out. And we we're working on the marketing on it, and we had all this stuff lined up, like weeks of work and creative and stuff ready to go. And the deal went through, and then on a Monday morning, I got an email saying, yeah, Marvel doesn't want you to use any of that creative anymore. Scrap it all. <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, Are you kidding me? Um, so I never saw the light of day. And that's why you love Disney, right? <laughs> I, I love everyone. That's right. I love and hate everyone equally. <laughs> <laughs> I read on the, the reason I, the reason I remember the timing so well was because I was really digging Spectacular Spider-Man as well as that Wolverine and the X-Men show and all yeah. that stuff got canceled. Mhm. Mm right after. And um and then you fast forward 15 years later when Disney buys Fox and they could put it all <laughs> back on. <laughs> right? Yep. Yeah. Because it was Fox that had it, right? Yeah, Fox. Well, Fox, yeah, had, had X-Men and then Sony was Spider-Man. But the the way that those deals worked, I think like they were doing those individually for like the cartoons because the X-Men show was on Nickelodeon at the time. Oh, was and, it? Yeah, it was Wolverine and the X-Men. And I, did, I didn't watch it on Nickelodeon. I had to download it, but I didn't do that. That was a joke. That, that didn't happen. But it was a good show. And it was cool because the first season ended. It was different than any other X-Men animated show. And they were going to do an Age of Apocalypse storyline in the second season. And then it was, you know, it was really exciting. They like had previewed some of the looks for the characters and then boom, it was gone. 
poof, like a part in the wind. Yep. It was interesting though, because they had made some, some interesting choices. They, I guess we don't really know for sure, but they killed off Gene early on and the professor. So we like open the series to assume that they're dead. And it was like Wolverine was putting them back together. Right. I think I might have seen an episode of this. And we got to see a couple characters that we didn't normally see in animation. So is this on uh, Disney Plus now? Uh, I believe it is now, yeah. I wonder if they'll ever show the, uh, the lost season. If it was ever got produced. Or if it ever got produced. Um, did you you watch the original X-Men animated series, right? Yes. Um, have you rewatched it recently? Uh, I did last year, kind of towards the beginning of the pandemic, I rewatched it. So have you like I don't remember what when I watched it originally when I was a kid. The change in style, I think, is in season three when they switched all their production to like Indonesia or wherever it went to, where they started cutting corners on the animation. Is that a season three or four? Um, it just went from you know typical Saturday morning cartoons to garbage, and I don't remember noticing yeah. that when I was a kid. Oh, I definitely noticed it this time around because. There was a specific episode that I was excited about. Um, there's an episode like later on where Wolverine teams up with Captain America. And I was like, this is, you know, awesome. I'm going to see Captain America on here. And the animation in that episode was so bad. Like that was, and that was definitely towards the end of the series. So that was definitely yeah. after that had happened. But yeah. yeah. Brutal. Yeah, sick. What happened there? Well, you know, that was a that was at a time when uh Marvel was, you know, teetering on bankruptcy. Yeah. Well, this is where I'm gonna go into some old school facts. When Avi Arad went and uh, did all those deals with all the other studios. Yep. Which was a Hail Mary to save the company that a lot of people still get kind of frown upon, like, oh, you know, you did this deal with Fantastic Four and Spider-Man and Blade and Punisher and um, who else did he, Daredevil and stuff, and then you ruined the franchise. And it's like, well, he saved the company with those deals. Like, a few, well, right, they were just trying to make money. Forget, few people forget that Blade, the first one with Wesley Snipes, basically saved Marvel Comics. That's crazy. Because yeah, because that movie made um let me look it up. Yeah. That movie made $155 million. And that was an R-rated movie too. That was an R-rated movie. That was like a substantial return on that film. And um, even if you look at Blade Trinity, which also made like 130 or something like that, and then Blade 2. Um, Blade 2, 155 as well. Blade oh, no, 2 sorry. was... Blade 1, 130. Blade 2, 155. Blade 3, 132. So those are all solid, solid um, returns. Blade for... 2 was great. Yeah, that one was a really interesting uh, storyline with um, the well, what were they? The guys whose mouths were opening sideways, kind of like that virus, parasite mm -hmm. vampire. That was really good. Uh, Blade Three uh, had its moments. I enjoyed Ryan Reynolds in that movie, but yeah, it it wasn't. Oh, the he best was great movie. movie. What did you do to that Pomeranian? Um, <laughs> triple H was in it, and 
Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> it is golden or uh, do you have silver? Uh, I had like fake fangs on. Triple H. Yeah, but Ryan Reynolds, pretty much, that's Deadpool in training, or the Hitman's bodyguard in training. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Speaking of which, I can't wait for the Hitman's wife's bodyguard. (laughs) That looks ridiculous. Um, Some of the guys I work with in Europe got to see it last week. Um. And they said it's like it's actually better than the first one. So if you liked the first one, you're gonna love this one. The first one was kind of like a surprise hit, wasn't it? Oh yeah. He rolled the cult tales of um, Deadpool, right? But it definitely performed better than anyone thought. And um, yeah, it's one of those movies that gets. And the, the way it works with a lot of films is that a production company is gonna raise money to put together a picture and they shoot the movie to get the actors whatever and then they have the film ready and they go to like film festivals or uh, events where you showcase your product and try to sell it so they'll shop it around to different studios or distribution houses and you know people the big guys passed on it and i think it was e1 or e1 picked it up in europe and somebody else picked it up in canada and stuff that kind of got fragmented it was a great movie. And the same thing happened with John Wick. None really? of the big guys wanted to touch John Wick. Uh, John Wick. And yeah, I think E1 picked it up or whoever, one of the companies that ended up buying picked it up. And yeah, a billion dollar franchise pretty much by the time yeah. it will be over. How, how would you like to be the executives that didn't pick that one up? Oh, jeez. You, you want to hear a funny one? Uh, Harry Potter. So Harry Potter ended up at <laughs> Warner Brothers. Um, oh, jeez. Was he at Sony? I can't remember if it was Sony or Disney who actually had the first crack at it. And a guy quit over it. That they didn't buy the movie. He quit. I can't remember what studio it was. And then sure enough, we went to uh, Warner Brothers and I don't like whatever. Man, and, this is, and this is Disney pre-Marvel, pre-Star Wars. Can you imagine? Like just the ramifications like with the theme park and everything. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Passing on Harry Potter. Wow. And I mean, the same thing happened with Twilight. But I don't think anybody in their right mind thought that that's going to be what it was. <laughs> so I can understand that one. Right. Um, but yeah, Twilight was something that was kind of a hard sell. Didn't end up with a major studio. The one with Jennifer Lawrence didn't really end up with a major studio. Um, which is actually very surprising because after the success of Twilight and the success of Harry Potter, you would think that all the studios would have been clamoring to get this teen fiction stuff going Mm -hmm. and actually i guess to a certain degree they were because you know we had the golden compass which was a studio film it wasn't something produced and then sold and ink heart um it's quite a few of them that didn't really do well so golden compass gold compass was actually really really good that's just a movie that never happened because of the church up for. Uh, See, enough, I don't even like, remember all that. Well, I was like, I, I, yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say I remember like the movie coming out, but I don't remember any of the uproar. But I guess that's kind of how it works. It just goes away. Yeah, and then they never really finished it because the Golden Compass doesn't end. Um, right, it finishes kind of that tale, but that's it. Um. But then, you know, fast forward 15 years later, and then HBO puts out that show, which is the whole story. I can't remember what the show's called, but it's the Golden Compass story. Um, but, yeah. 
I think it was the Catholic Church was upset because it implied um, like it definitely has religious implications, like parallels. Um, now it's not a topic I want to dive into on our family friends. Right. <laughs> But I mean, at the same time, like not actually diving into the topic, but at the same time, like that's that's clear in tons of movies, books, whatever, well, you know, um, it happened with um, Angels and Demons. Yeah. Oh, protests for Angels and Demons. Um, the thing about that stuff that's kind of weird is I didn't read Angels and Demons, but I read the first one. It's like. These aren't true. Like this is fiction. Why is this bothering you? You know, it's it's it is what it is. I mean, you just if you don't like it, don't read it. You know. <laughs> uh, well, but, yeah, we're, we're not going to dive into that topic. Yep. <laughs> About what's fiction and what's not. <clears throat> but I'm just sure. saying, like Angels and Demons was written that way. Yeah. And nobody had an issue with it um, when it was a book. It was just when it started getting a lot of critical acclaim and got a lot of buzz. It's something to do with, I can't remember what it was, but something to do with the Virgin Mary and there's some story about that, right? It was like it's sacrilegious to you to even discuss the possibility of whatever had happened anyways yeah <laughs> so much for not going to that topic um anyway um so dr strange uh, multiverse of madness <laughs> yes there's some rumors about who the villain's going to be in that movie and i know nothing about this character oh who who's this supposed to be uh, I don't even know how to say his name. It's like a giant monster looking. Uh, I'll, I'll look it up real quick. Villain Doctor Strange. Let's see. Shuma Garath? Huh? Shuma Garath? Does that ring a bell at all? It's like this giant eyeball looking thing with tentacles, but he's supposed to, yes, or he whatever in, it is, uh, is supposed to be stronger than in, Mephisto. In Capcom's um, Marvel vs. Capcom? No, in the first one, oh, it was my, just my gosh, Marvel. really? Yeah, it was just it's like oh, this okay. octopus eyeball thing. <laughs> I wonder how they're going to do that on screen because of like, you know, how they did ego. Like they, they gave ego basically like a vessel, but he was the planet as weird. Yeah. But this guy's not. Oh, but he looks weird. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. They've got to give him a vessel. So let's see what I'm going to do with this. What are we on time? Okay. Quarter to six. Yeah, I'm a. Uh, yeah, after I finish this, I'm probably going to have to wrap up. Yeah, I got to wrap up around six. So that may be like 10 more minutes. Because I got to order everything online because we're still in culture. Oh, we lost it. We lost your video. Oh, no. Okay, hold on a second. Is your phone overheating? Yeah, but let me see if I can close oh, some go. stuff. Yeah, there you go. It's um, weird how that works. I don't understand. Like, it should just let me close what I want to close. Phone telling me what I can and can't do. Come on now. I need to grab. Um, so I've been using my Pentel pocket brush pen a lot trying to um figure it out and i just guy? ran through my yes that guy 
I love yeah. that. Yeah. I'm I'm starting to get used to it. I've had it for like three years. I just changed the repo for the first time. Show how much I've used it. <laughs> I um, did the same thing. What? It's like, okay, I'm getting the hang of it. I, I did the same thing. Like, it's, it's the closest thing I have to an actual brush. And I got it a couple years ago. And then I finally uh, ran through a refill. And then I, I put another one in. And when I put the other one in, I ordered some more because I knew I was going to run out again. And I ran out of the next one in like less than a month. I've been using it a lot. Yeah, I'm trying, to... this... <laughs> um, I'm trying to get into doing the spotting the blacks in black. Like that's what I did with this venom and the other venom. The black is just straight out black and gray. Um, because it's simpler, it's a lot easier than trying to do tones in ink. Um, and that pen works great for it. Yeah, I've I've really been enjoying using it because I I don't use brushes at all, and it's like the closest thing I have to a brush, so it's it's been challenging. And I don't know what the heck I did with my ink refills. I got like a six pack of them because I knew I was going to be using it a lot. And now I can't find them. Oh man, this is disappointing. Are you blocked? You can't go any further now? I can. I can use a different pen, but I just was hoping to use this one. I thought I put it... Oh, here they are. They're right in front of my face the whole time. <laughs> Did you check in front of your face? With... Yeah, it tends to happen with art supplies. Where's yeah. that marker I was just using? <laughs> the one you're holding in your hand? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Supposedly, these two, you can just kind of use whatever ink you want and just refill the cartridges or put it, you know, clean out the cartridge and put whatever you want in there. Um, what, these little plastic cartridges can refill? Uh, I think you can refill them. I've never done that. I just throw them away. But uh, I think that you can because I think it's Scotty Young I saw said that he does that. But You know, what? actually, that, that makes sense. I'm gonna try it when this one's done for that. Find some NDA, just dropping it in. Well, try to fill it, and if it doesn't work, then toss it and grab uh, another cartridge. Uh, and I'm just gonna spot a lot of blacks on here. Just I like because if you if you're kind of quick with it, you know, like a brush or whatever, it gets kind of grainy, and I like that mm -hmm. kind of look to it. Yeah. Uh, who's I watching? He was using one of these and um, just gets really, really like a nice dry brush effect out of it, but full. So, like when it's almost dry, right? Like when the cartridge is almost empty, you get that nice textured effect. But when you put in a new the refill, not sure how you can get that texture. Somebody was doing it. Yeah, so that's I, how, I was. That's I was doing this the other day, and it was kind of running <laughs> low. And uh, you can see all that right in there and in there. Yeah, it's a nice texture. The same thing. Yeah. It's like when you see. That uh, is my problem. Your what? I was gonna say my problem is control. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Especially the way Jim Lee does um, his dry brush, like with the Kleenex and um, he's actually using he, a dry dry brush. He was the first one I ever saw get like the either like a little business card or a toothbrush or something and do like the spatter with the white. He was the first one I ever saw do that. I didn't realize that was so common. Yeah. Well, they showed it to us in school. Um, but then they said a toothbrush will give you much better control. It doesn't. 
Well, yeah, it is more controlled, but it's not as organic. Yeah. So, cool figure. Oh, Noel is blonde, isn't he? Yes. I think uh, it, the one you're doing, are you doing uh, Richard Ryder? I don't know. This one. I think that's the one you're doing, and I think he is blonde. The there's one another one that's – there's a younger one that's – I think his name's Sam Alexander. I don't think he's blonde, but I, he's, like, more of a kid, so. Uh, the one with the armor. Yeah. I believe he's blonde. Yeah, well, Google shows him as light-haired or gray hair. Okay. It's fine. We'll make right, it work. Red Hood. Red Hood. Making content for my next claim sale. I haven't been doing a lot of cards lately. so. Uh, you know what? I found this size, which is the um, basically two sketch cards together, so three and a half by five. Mm -hmm. It's got to be my favorite size to work on. It's big enough to get some detail in, not like, or this, right? Uh, big enough so you can get some proper detail in, but not too big that's going to take too long. Yeah, that's yeah that is, that is a good size because usually I jump from like the sketch card to the five by seven, and five by seven sometimes is a little bit too big for me. Yeah, because I'm still trying to get like the sketch card framing and everything. But yeah, then I think I it depends like on a, what you're doing. Yeah, like. This, I kind of feel like I have like a little bit too much white space, but that was all I wanted to do in it. Mm -hmm. So that would have looked better on like a, an oversized sketch card, maybe. Well, it still looks good. Oh, thank you. But um, yeah, I just like, I think I know, like when you're working on a sketch card, you feel like you need to fill all that space. Yeah. But when you get working a little bigger, you don't need to go to the edge, right? Or right. you feel like you don't need to go to the edge. Um, but that's why I like to work, like I prefer to work on just watercolor paper and then trim it. Um, because you can't yeah, help but look at the overall piece of paper and use that as the framing. And I always end up working outside the trim arts and then when it trims, like, okay, this is nice and tight. You know, that's, that's a good, I, that's what you're, what you're talking about. That's a good idea. And I kind of started doing that on that, like last round of commissions I was doing, I got like a bigger sheet and just like framed out the sketch card. So I didn't stop myself from drawing, but it's still kind of framed, you know, what I was doing. Yeah. It's kind of like those old, uh, the Rittenhouse APs. Yeah. Uh, they're the uncut size. cards. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is like going back to what I was saying before, kind of thinking of printing my own stock. I don't think I'd print standard sketch cards. I would just print oversized uh, five by fours. And with the crop marks. So what like would you do it on the back? Um, just you would still do, but I guess you just do the same thing. It would just be bigger. No, I'd still brand it on the back, like do the design to work within the two and a half by three and a half, but have it okay. bleed, right? So use all the space. So let's say I do it on a red background, have the entire back uh, red, but constrain the branding within that two and a half by three and a half space. Um, and then that way kind of gives the buyer the choice. If they um, want to cut it or not. Yeah, I, and then that way I wouldn't cut it. Like yeah, that's that's cool. Stock, they're all this size, and uh, you can do with it as you please. And I think most people would maybe even value it a little bit more because it is bigger. It's yeah. one of those scenarios where collectors look at something like an oversized card, just by definition, is valued more than a single, like a standard size card, just because it's more canvas. Yeah, that's that's a pretty cool idea. Yeah, not going into a bigger is better conversation, but um, 
trying to keep this G. Uh huh. <laughs> trying very, very hard. Okay, I think. Oh, yeah, I was going to say because we're still pretty much locked on here, so you got to order everything online and then go for curbside pickup. So, you know, have some stuff from Home Depot, like a garden hose nozzle and some chemicals for the pool. And then this other chain called Canadian Tire, which is kind of like Home Depot some garden rocks so i gotta order everything online and then you wait for them to send you an email saying okay come pick up your, sh your stuff yeah and it's always <laughs> like you get that email at five o'clock right all right so now i gotta make sure i make it to the store in time to pick up my rocks to pick up your rocks mm, yeah. <laughs> what did i get uh 18.6 kilograms that's 40 pounds I got 160 pounds of gravel. <laughs> it's like another passenger. Yeah. Um, shiny. No, not shiny. They're not shiny. They're matte little white stones to put in the garden to make it pretty. Or so I'm, I'm told. It's one of those things that you, you just do as you're told. <laughs> That's I'm right. not going to argue about this. Like you, you want white rocks? You got it. You want, what, six metric tons? Okay, you got it. Might have to go more than <laughs> once. It's I don't know how much of it is going to fit in my little Camry, but you got it. <laughs> You're going to test the limits. Yeah, that's right. Okay, take out the seats. You got it. No problem. When baby wants, baby gets. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right. Yeah, I gotta go pick up my rocks. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, I'm at so, a good stopping point. Yeah, go on, on for, geez, almost two hours. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, great chat, Gordon. Always a pleasure having you pop on. Ghost Rider. Same, I enjoyed it. Not Red Skull. Red Hood. <laughs> the um, other red red faced. Yeah. With a gun and not a crowbar. Um, yeah, without a crowbar. I drew him with a gun this time. He's got a crowbar in his other hand. That's okay. That's right. Um, yeah, again, thanks so much for tuning in, everyone. I'll probably be back on Monday because it's a holiday Monday. Um, so I won't be on Sunday, but I might be on for like four hours on Monday. Um, apparently you guys don't have a long weekend, so you'll be at work. Um, I'll be watching. <laughs> hard at work. Um, anything you want to pimp while you're on? Uh, just, uh, my Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, Art of Gordon Wills. Um, most of the stuff that I post on my feed is available if any of the stuff, if anybody's interested in any of it, just shoot me a message. There you and go. And Ghost Rider and Red Hood. If anybody's interested in Ghost Rider and Red Hood, let me know. There you go. Good stuff. You look great. I like your happy skulls. Like, it's creepy, but it's still happy. My happy skulls. <laughs> yeah. Happy skulls. Yeah, I think it's the yeah. eyes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But it's still creepy, you know, like it's, it's still a flaming skull and it's not like cuddly, but. Um, right. <laughs> but it, it just from the style, right? All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy your weekend. We'll catch you next time.